how about we make some claws for some fursuit feet, shall we? So, the fabric I'm using here is minky. I've made sure to check which direction I'm wanting the minky to go, which is towards the end of the claw for this set. And now I'm just tracing out my pattern with a black sharpie. If you're going to use sharpies, make sure it's the black ones because they are the only ones that won't bleed and run. I know the colors say that they're permanent, but they are not. Trust me on this. I have a story of staining a fursuit with it. Um, if you'd like to hear that comment, I guess, but I'm tracing out all eight of these giant monster claws for these feet paws for a suit that I'm currently working on and finishing up. I'm making sure to take note of the minky direction making sure that it's going all the same way so with this technique i'm only tracing it on one side and i'm tracing them in like one big sheet so i'm going to cut them all out as one big rectangle rather than cutting them out individually so i'm tracing them side by side in one big sheet this just makes it easier down the road you can cut them out and do them one at a time but i find that this method is so much quicker um just tracing them out cutting them out in a big rectangle and then after stitching cutting them out individually this is just what i find easiest and i think it's a it's a good time saver and we'll see we'll see why a little bit later so at this point i'm just going ahead and i'm grabbing my pins and i'm going to pop a pin into the middle of each of the claws this just makes sure that they're all lined up i double check the back you know make sure that everything's in place that it has a second half so we're popping a pin in each claw you can obviously add more pins if you're a little bit unsure about the minky moving while you're stitching um, but for me i found just one pin in the middle of each claw works if you're a bit newer to it i might add a couple of more but for now this is this is what works for me and then like i said i'm just going to cut them out all together as one big rectangle and this this will um, save us time in the sewing process now guys if you have any other tutorials that you would like to see please let me know um, and this will be the first in the series of little trade secrets that I will share with you of how I do things here in my first suit makers workshop so now we're just popping over to the sewing machine and remember to back stitch your seams so see how i go forward and back right at the beginning here we need to remember to do that because if we don't our stitching's gonna come out when we cut it out so please remember to do that and now here's the little trick see when i go all the way when i turn my needle around and i go all the way down the other side of the claw right here yep and i go forward and back i actually don't lift the needle up and cut the thread i just stitch a little line and move straight to the next floor and the reason i do this is it saves time so in the real life recording of this little section of the video i think it only took me eight maybe ten minutes to sew up all of these claws because i wasn't constantly taking um like picking my foot up and pulling it out cutting my threads and all that sort of thing it just saves so much time and it saves thread it saves so much thread we're not wasting as much thread with what we would have to be if we we're cutting it so this is my biggest tip if you don't feel comfortable doing it this way of course just do them one at a time but i i think this is an absolute fabulous way to do this if you can i um, mean i'll show you i'll show you a little close up here in this in a second what i mean just remember to always back stitch the beginning and the end of your claws so see how i've stitch them all as one big group i didn't i didn't take my needle up i didn't cut the threads now i'm just going to repeat the exact same process for the top row of claws i think this is a fabulous technique this is what i use every time especially when i'm doing heaps of claws it saves so much time my needle came on thread here so i had to re-thread it the joys of of <laughs> sewing needles now if you would like to vote on what my next tutorial is i have a poll up on my patreon for my my fabulous supporters who help me pick videos and all that sort of stuff they even get first dibs on pre-mades and designs that i'm going to be making so if you like to support me as an artist patreon is a great way to do it i even offer one-on-one -on -one fursuit like help making if you're struggling or if you want tips and one-on-one -on -one advice um patreon's a great way to do that and i really 
I love all my supporters there so much. Um, they're really fabulous. So we're getting to the end of this, this next section here. We're taking our time, remembering to backstitch the beginning and end. I'm going to keep saying that because if you forget, all your hard work is going to come undone. So remember to backstitch the beginning and the end. Yeah, I, I can't not stress how important that is. So here we go. Let's have a look. See, we've done it as one, one big, one big batch. They're all there. They're all done. And now we just have to cut them out. So I cut around all our claws, obviously taking out all our pins. I leave about half a centimeter of seam allowance, sometimes a little bit less. Um, but you do want to leave enough so that your fabric isn't either going to fray. Minky doesn't tend to fray, but sometimes it can tear. So we just want to make sure we're leaving enough behind that it's not going to tear. And because we've remembered to backstitch the beginning and the end, we can just cut straight through those little lines that we stitched in between the claws and not even worry about because we remember to finish up our seams. Now, one important thing to remember to do, um, once you have cut around all your claws, is to do something called relief cuts. So relief cuts are used in dressmaking and I've kind of brought them over to the fursuit world um, and they're used to put relief on fabric where it's going to be in high areas of stress so when you're doing large curves and stuff like that if you want to stop the fabric wrinkling we need relief cuts so I'll show you how we do them we just it's as simple as snipping into the fabric um, you definitely want them on the under curve of your claw. You really, really want them there. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to turn your claw out the right way when the time comes. I did add two to three on the top just to make sure that there was enough space for it to turn properly. So we got a nice, smooth claw. And we just do that to all of them. And remember to um, snip the, the top of your claw to the very tip, making sure that, you know, we're... We don't have a big bulk of fabric there because if we have a big bulk of excess fabric there we're not going to be able to turn it the, the right way around and obviously when you're doing your relief cut be careful not to snip your stitching we don't want it to come undone we just want to we just want to snip into our extra fabric of our seam allowance we don't want to actually snip into our stitching so that's the basics of that it's pretty repetitive we just need to do this for all of our claws One thing super cool about this suit, and if you are on my Patreon or on my Instagram or any of my other chats, because I got so excited I had to share it, is there is a lot of inbuilt LEDs. And I'll be making like a whole video just like showing off this suit, but it's so cool. It is the most LEDs I've ever put like in a suit in a complex way. Like it doesn't just have um, LEDs in its eyes. It's got LEDs lighting up pieces of this skull. It's got LEDs lighting up scratches. I'm very proud of it. Okay. I think... I think it's pretty, pretty sick, pretty mint. I'm really keen for how this suit is going. And hopefully by the time this video is out, all the um, official photos will be out. So you can, you can check them out and see how cool they look. I think they're fabulous, but you know, who, who am I to say? So we're just getting to the last claw here. Like I said, tedious and Time consuming. I think I had about three hours of footage that I've condensed down here for you guys. Um, I wanted to show everything so that you, you can see that it does take time, unfortunately. So now here's the fun part. We're turning them the right way. So we want to get some pillow stuffing. Um, you can just buy it at the hobby shop or if you're making something for yourself. You can just get a cheap pillow from the cheap shop and just, you know, rip the stuffing out. Don't do that if you're doing commissions, but if it's for yourself, you know, why not? And I'm using a um, flathead screwdriver here, so something that doesn't have a sharp point on it, to really help me push out the end. Like you can see, I'm flipping it out and I'm using this screwdriver to really get to the end of that claw and really push it out all the way. And the reason we're not using something pointy and we're using a small flathead screwdriver, because obviously we don't want to stab holes in our things. So using a flathead screwdriver helps avoid that whole chaos of stabbing holes where they shouldn't be. So we're doing that and like I said, just repeating it for all the claws and then simplest stuffing them all. Now one trick 
is you want to make sure that your stuffing goes all the way to the tip of your claws and to do that what I like to do is get like a smaller ball of stuffing and put that in first like one about the size of my thumb and put that in first make sure it goes all the way and then stuff the rest that's the best way that I have found to make sure that you get stuffing all the way to the end and that it actually like it actually goes all the way to the end and you don't end up with that little that little weird um unstuffed bit right at the tip of your claw now for something that's going to happen later in the video i might as well cover it now is i'm going to be showing a different method of installing claws in this video of how to keep them nice and round and nice and like 3d and poofy um, there is another method which is to be honest a lot easier and a lot quicker um, so if you're new to making claws you might want to try this one um, and that is to simply just run a line of stitching across the end of your claw once you've finished stuffing it you know close close the hole and then just pop it into into the seam of your paw so just stitch it into your paw or your feet paw wherever in your in your seam down the center front of your paw However, in this one, we're doing something a little bit tricky. So we're not actually going to be like stitching them closed per se beforehand. Um, to make this process easier, if you felt like it, you could always add a little, a little flat base to the bottom of, of your claw. Um, but if not, you can do what I'm doing. If you're feeling confident and feeling good, you can do what I'm doing, which is just stitching it straight to the paw and you'll see, you'll see that in a second. Now, if you've got this far in the video and you're thinking, huh, I really don't want to do this myself. I feel you, my loves. I feel you, my lovelies. So, I do have a couple of packs of pre-made um, hand pull claws for sale in my buyer that didn't end up selling at um, Ferdy this year. So, they're available there. There'll probably be a couple of custom slots still left. Um, the website will be in the description if you would just rather purchase some rather than make them, which is fair. The ones that I have available have the end stitch closed, so they're not this round method. If you would like to do this round method, you just have to take the stitching out. Um, but they're just stitch flat. See how these ones, I haven't closed them, they're just round and open. Um, but they're stitched flat. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to test fit the claw, figure out where I want it, and then do a ladder stitch to stitch it on. If you really wanted to, you could close the claw and stitch into your seam like normal and then still do this lighter stitch all the way around, like pulling the claw open so it stays fat and open, but I just find this a bit easier. Um, but I have seen people do it that way, so that is also an option if you don't feel comfortable with doing it this way. So I'm picking what claw I want, where I want it, and I'm popping the knot on the inside of the claw just so that, you know, you won't see it. I'm just making sure it's in the right spot. We want to try and have our claws sit more towards the inside rather than the outside of our feet boards so that they don't end up sticking out at weird angles. So I just put the knot of my thread on the inside like that and I just go and start doing a ladder stitch. So a ladder stitch is one stitch on one side. So this case on the, on the green paw and then the other stitch on the claw. And I'm doing the stitches at about half a centimeter, if not less. And going all the way around and i'll show in a second here when i've got halfway around i add a bit more stuffing in there just just to make them that, that little bit extra poofy and to to keep keep the base really big and poofy because we love we love poofy claws and i'm going to continue with my lighter stitch and we'll have a nice close up here so you can see what i mean so we're just taking one one stitch on the green just like that and then the other stitch on the claw itself. This is a beautiful stitch to add to your fursuit making arsenal. If you are trying to make fursuits or cosplays, this is a wonderful stitch to have up your belt. It makes um, beautiful, beautiful invisible seams. And I'm using a, real, a doubled over thread of strong upholstery thread, which means this ain't gonna break. Um, so yes, we just do one stitch one side, one stitch the other side all the way around. Um, sometimes I'll even do a second, a second go around if I am, you know, a bit unsure of how stable they are, but generally doing your small stitches, keeping it under about half a centimeter per stitch, um, 
will will keep it strong enough and especially when you've got a doubled over thread like we have of an upholstery thread so it should be super strong as is but you can always do a second round if you want to doubly make sure so as we're stitching up here I'm just going to knot off add a knot in the end of my thread so to do that you just pick up a small piece of your fabric and put your needle through the loop that's created to create to create a knot. Now I do this two or three times just to really make sure that the thread is knotted and secure. See, just like that. I'm doing it a bit quick, but you just take a small bit of the fabric and put your needle through the fabric. Now, to snip off my end here, I push the needle through the green, pull it tight and then snip the thread. So the thread goes invisible because it like gets sucked back into the pool. So it's invisible, we won't actually see it. It's a nice, beautiful, clean finish. Gotta love it. So in a second, I'll show you what they, they look like on the finished pool. It's doing a bit of a stress test. So one of the middle ones are looking a little bit wonky, but you'll see why in a second, because I like tug them around. We want to make sure that they're on nice and secure. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have something that you would like to learn how to do in first week making, chuck it in the comments. Check out my Patreon if you want to see behind the scenes stuff or have one-on-one -on -one help with first week making. And I appreciate every single one of you and thank you so much for supporting my art. And I will see you guys in the next tutorial.